I want to teach on the biggest hurdle to our success. And I, and I think I could probably change the, the subject matter multiple times a week and say, this is the biggest hurdle or this is the biggest hurdle. And I could make a case for it. But based on my own experience in coaching people, talking to you folks on the phone, thousands and thousands of people, I think the most overlooked hurdle, and I think it is the biggest hurdle for our success, is a lack of self-awareness. I want you to just soak on that for a second. Think about people in your life that you've done life with that they are almost walking around with a blindfold on. They, they, they have no clue. It's like they've never seen a mirror. They have no idea how the world interacts with them. They don't pick up on the clues or the cues. They've had feedback given back to them and they don't respond to it. They just are oblivious to how the world sees them, experiences them. And by the way, we all have blind spots. And the key to tremendous personal and professional success is being somebody who is very disciplined to have mirrors all around you. You know, it's you want to have mirrors beside you, in front of you, on top of you, below you, behind you. Do I see myself how I truly am? Because if you don't have self-awareness, we've seen it become absurd with these reality TV shows. You know, there's never been a greater example than these audition shows like American Idol or America's Got Talent. These are big hits in the Coleman household. And we laugh at people like this that are just ridiculously delusional. We laugh at them. You know, they walk out from these judges and they tell the world how great they are and then they proceed to humiliate themselves. Except for my favorite, the, the favorite clips that we all enjoy is the person who humiliates themselves and yet is not humiliated. They're still, they just bombed. I mean, my favorite is the, um, is America's Got Talent. It's our, it's our favorite show as a family to watch. And my favorite is when the person goes out there uh, and, and gets the four X's. And, 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 and then it's over. The audition's over. And they've been awful. The crowd is standing up and booing them and laughing at them. And the judges give them four X's. And then this is what we see on the stage. What? I don't, I don't get it. Everybody in the room is booing me. They think I suck. The judges just gave me four X's to get me off the stage. And I'm still holding on. What's going on there? Well, folks, obviously we're, we're talking about real delusion, okay? And it's kind of sad. Like, it stopped being funny for me for a while because it was like, this is a person who is out of touch with reality. Okay, that's the extreme, all right? Well, let's back this up a little bit and let's apply this to us, okay? We, hopefully, we aren't walking around that clueless because that, that's train wreck. But let's, let's, let's apply this a little bit more practically. I may be going after some work that requires some talent that I'm not actually gifted with. Now, let's just look at the sweet spot application as I teach. The sweet spot is where our, our talent, passion, and mission all come together. I use what I do best. Think of that as like a tool to perform work that I really love to do, that's passion, to then produce results that matter deeply to me, that's mission. So I use what I do best to do work I love to produce results that matter to me. I might not have the talent. I might have the passion. I love the work. I love the idea of the work. And I'm really enthusiastic about the results. But if we rank talent on a scale of 1 to 10, 
One being you are dreadfully awful at it. Ten being you are superbly terrific at it. And if you are a four or five on that talent line or lower and you're trying to pursue work and you keep getting dead ends and dead ends and dead ends, you keep getting rejected and you're not getting anywhere and you're going, I'm frustrated, I'm angry, I'm confused, I'm depressed. A lack of self-awareness is holding you back because of just a slight tweak to go, whoa, I'm actually pursuing something that I need to be a seven, eight, or nine in, and I'm a four or five. So what do I need to do? I need to be aware. I need to know what am I most talented at doing? What are my top hard skills and soft skills? Oh, okay. We got a gap there. Let's let's just make a trajectory switch. We go, okay, I need to be pursuing things over here that allow me to use these top talents that I can turn into sharpened skills. Because remember, if I work hard and I get training and experience and feedback, I can turn a talent into a sharpened skill. I can go from a six or a seven to an eight or a nine. Or a 10. Self-awareness. Let's flip it. I could be pursuing something that's in my sweet spot, but I've got these tremendous weaknesses that I've yet to be, I've yet to fully address because I'm not fully aware. And I've got the talent, I've got the passion, and and I've got the mission really clear, but I've got some deep fears and deep doubts or deep insecurities, or I've got pride issues. And I'm not moving up the ladder because I'm unaware of some personal pain or big time doubt and insecurity that's holding me back because of the way I'm interacting with people and the way that I'm acting. I'm going, Ken, I'm in my sweet spot, but I'm not moving up. Are you aware of why you're not moving up? Self-awareness, folks, is huge. And I just kind of gave you an overview Are you aware of what your weaknesses are? Are you aware of what your actual sweet spot is? I mean, that's why I teach that and get clear. Getting clear, stage one of my seven stages to meet of work is all about self-awareness. It's the life giver. Oh, now I know why I'm frustrated. We had a call earlier in the show. It was Robert. Same industry, 18 years, 10 years in leadership. He had the juice for leadership early on. He called and said, Ken, I don't want to lead anymore. I don't have the passion for it. So we dug in. Why? And he admitted it. I'm frustrated at my team. Why are you frustrated? Because I have unrealistic expectations. He was self-aware. Credit to Robert. Oh, the problem is me. I need to fix that. Self-awareness gets us to a place where we can grow and get better. And so it's really important because here's the deal. Here's a guy that calls presenting as, I've lost my passion for leadership. No, you haven't. Your passion for leadership has been snuffed out, temporarily covered up. The flame has been covered up by your unhealthiness. Ooh, let me get aware. Oh, it's me. And so when I begin to realize that as a leader, a person who's lost their passion for leadership and they realize I didn't lose my passion for leadership, I'm the problem. I'm frustrated at my team, so I don't want to lead them anymore, which means I feel like I don't want to lead. But that's not the case at all. So when we deal with the source of the problem, and that comes from self-awareness, we free ourselves. And it's a game changer. So I don't know where you need to get self-aware. But self-awareness is the advantage. It's the game changer. Successful men and women keep moving up because along the way, they have processes and people in place to stay self-aware so that they can keep growing and not be their own worst enemy. Self-awareness is the juice, but I will warn you, It's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable getting there, 
but it is great on the other side.